welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the very first time it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera, we're British, early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money saving life here in Brittany in northwest France and every Friday we bring you something frugal food related and this week we're going to have a chat about how to write a grocery budget and stick to it. All over money saving groups and all over frugal groups, there'll be people there for the very first time asking, how, do, how much should I be spending on groceries for a family of four or six or two? So it's a very frequently asked question. So let's get into that one first of all. advice or should I say the advice that has been around for many years is for a family to spend 10% of their overall budget on groceries. So let's unpick that. Um, our overall budget is 2,500 a month and it, it would be almost impossible for us to eat on 250 a month. It would be very very meagre it would be very rice and beans. And it doesn't suit everybody, does it, to spend so little on food. I mean, we, for example, spend 400 euros a month at the supermarket, but we eat meat, we eat fish, we eat fresh fruit and vegetables. We often eat organic vegetables. We eat free range eggs, we eat real cheese. We have milk. We, we eat, I eat gluten-free products. So if you, if you look at it, 10% is a best fit, but it certainly isn't going to suit everybody. And then what if your family has a budget of 8,000 a month? Would you want to spend 800 a month on food? Would it be necessary? So that amount isn't always the perfect amount. Let's get into that into a bit more detail. new to budgeting and you really want to sort out your groceries budget, you're going to need to spend probably a month testing your food budget. And honestly, you need to keep receipts of everything that you buy, or if you pay for that on a debit card and you check that on your bank account. But you need to keep a record of everything you buy on food, not just your weekly shop, but do you pick up food on the way to work? Do you pick up food at lunchtime? Do you pick up the occasional takeaway? Do you do a top up shop on your way home from work? Do you call into the local store because you've forgotten milk or bread? You need to then look at that over the month and be realistic and look at that and think to yourself, how much do we actually spend? If you're overspending, it'll be immediately apparent to you, won't you? Because you'll look at that and go, whoa, we've really got to stop spending that much money. But it will give you the realistic view of what you're actually spending on all of your food for a family as a start point. Before you get into writing your groceries budget, you're also going to have to be realistic about the people that you are the people who are actually in your family. And there are things to consider. I mean, are there babies in your family? Are you still buying formula milk for them? Are there people in your family who have sensory issues with certain foods? They'll only eat certain bread, no matter what it costs, or certain cheese, that they won't eat meat, or there's certain vegetables that they will or won't eat because sensory issues are real. Are there people in your family who have dietary issues? The people in your family who can't eat lactose, so you're buying lactose-free milk or lactose-free cheese, that costs more. Are there people in your family who are gluten intolerant? Gluten-free bread, gluten-free products cost a lot of money. 
Are there people in your family who've got dietary needs due to health reasons? There could be people in your family who are insulin resistant and have to therefore eat a low carbohydrate diet and are spending more money on proteins. Um, are there people in your family, your family as a whole family, do you have cultural or religious needs that you eat by? Do you, is there only one halal butchers or kosher butchers in your neighborhood? Is there only one kosher supermarket in your neighborhood? Are you limited to where you can shop by what you can buy? As a family, have you decided that you're only going to eat organic produce? All of these things will have an impact on your budget. You won't therefore be able to stick to where you're only going to spend 10% or 15%. But just like I said, you have to be realistic about what you're buying. You're going to have to be realistic about the family that you are and the people who are in your family, because that has an impact on how you set your groceries budget. Let's now have a chat about different ways that you can have a groceries budget. You could be like us and just have a supermarket budget. Our supermarket budget is 400 euros a month. All food, all drink, all toiletries, all cleaning products, all laundry products, all bathroom tissues, everything, 400 euros a month. Or you could have a budget for everything that isn't food and everything that is food. And then you could think about, well, how am I going to separate that when I'm at the supermarket? You could put, two lots of goods through the through the tills, can't you? You can put all your food through first, put the barrier down, pay for all that separately and have your food receipts, and then have all your non-food items come through, and then you can have your non-food items receipt. Or you could do what we have, and you could have an overall supermarket budget. But that's something else for you to consider about how you budget, is how you're going to split those items. So you've gone through the process of checking what you've actually spent at the supermarket and how much you've actually spent on all the food that you buy over the month. It might surprise you and you might want to cut back on that and decide on a budget. The amount of money that you are going to spend as a family. If you're at the moment spending 750 a month on food, it's not going to be something so easy. You can say, we're going to halve that. That's not realistic. But you can say, we'll drop that by 20% this month and see how we go with that. And if it works for you, and you might say to yourself, there's still food in the freezer, there's still food in the cupboard, we might try and drop that again by another 10%. And then you will balance out what was for you, the budget that you are happy to stick with. <music> this far in the video I'm going to run through now my top tips for actually sticking to your supermarket budget and if you're familiar with the channel you know I've shared these with you before but it's it's a good thing to revise them aren't there my favorite thing to do to make sure that I'm not buying more than I need and I'm not spending more than I need is I stock check what I have the second thing that I do from that is I make sure that I write a list up in my kitchen I've got a write on wipe off board that's a mouthful write on wipe off board which I keep a running list up there of things that I need. So when I go to the supermarket, I've got an idea of what I need because I've done a meal plan. And sometimes I'll meal plan because I've got quite a good stock of food in the house for a couple of weeks, if not more, because I'll come up with that idea of how many meals do I actually have in the house. So when I go to the supermarket, I make sure that I go with a list. And if it's not on the list, it's not going in the shopping cart. It's just not going in there. We don't have that kind of budget to waste money like that. The next thing that we make sure that we do, and it's a good tip, you might not like this one, is you shop for your meals first. You don't buy snack food unless that is money that you've got spare that you can uh, fritter away on cookies and candies and sweeties and biscuits. 
because that will drain your shopping budget, your groceries budget. So make sure that I don't shop when I'm hungry. So I shop very early in the morning and I normally never eat breakfast. I'm not a breakfast person, but I make sure that I make myself a milky coffee and I have a pot of yogurt before I go in. So I've got that sort of protein in me so I don't feel hungry. Shopping the deals. You'll know if you watch the channel that I shop the deals. If meat is on offer and pork is on offer, I buy enough pork to see us through for a good few weeks. I shop the bottom shelves. Eyeline is byline. I shop the bottom shelves. I shop the ends of aisles. I buy generic. If it's cheaper and I like it and we like it. We shop reduced priced food. So I go in first thing in the morning and lots of the meat, but actually most of the meat that I buy will have a 33% sticker on it and I get it reduced. Um, I supplement our shopping with frozen fruit and frozen veg. We mainly eat fresh, but I buy peas, I buy beans, I buy sweet corn and I'll buy those frozen. I will buy fruit frozen. I will buy fruit in cans. All supplements are our budget, doesn't it? And there are things that I avoid buying. So other than the occasional bag of washed, chopped salad, like lettuce and um, salad greens, I avoid buying anything that's prepared or chopped or prepared for me. I can wash my own vegetables. I can peel my own carrots. I can cut my own carrot batons. I can do those things. So there we go. Those are my top tips sharing with you how we stick to our groceries budget. This is where I'm going to hand it over to you. How do you decide the amount of money that is right for you and your family as a budget? Did you have a formula? Did you have a percentage? Or did you just find out what you're spending, bring it down a bit and find some balance of how to set your groceries budget? Share your top tips as well of how you stick to your groceries budget. It's always great to hear from you and reread every single one of your comments. And we know you read the comments and enjoy them too. Thanks for watching. Thank you massively for hitting the like button. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.